town of the good, the bad, and the weird. You either live by the gun, or you die by the sword. Welcome to The Good, The Bad, and The Weird. I'm Nico. And I'm Chris. And this is our first mini-sode where we cover more recent films that we don't have time to do a whole lot of research on, and there's not a lot out there on them yet. Especially stuff that's, like, currently in theaters or about to leave theaters. Um, And this week, we went and saw Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Yes. Uh, Same title as the American, or the original American release of Godzilla 2. Definitely. Uh, first impression, wow. It was pretty damn good. Um, gra- I liked gra- it. Gra- graphically, <laughs> it's enjoyable. Um, they crammed a lot into the movie, which, I mean, it's a Godzilla film. Yeah. So we got to have as much as possible in every single frame. But I felt like they did a pretty good job with it. Yeah, f- for what it was, I mean, it... Don't go into this movie expecting it to be a groundbreaking Godzilla film. Oh, no. It's it's a universe setup film. It's this there is... there to set up the world of Godzilla that's yeah. going to be happening sometime in the future. Yeah, this is only the third one in this universe of Godzilla that they've restarted. So, you know, we had to catch a lot of stuff up to speed and also introduce a lot of monsters really fast. Mm-hmm. And I think they did that pretty successfully. Yeah, and I mean, it's it is what it is. I just I'm not a huge fan of all these companies trying to create a universe to mimic what Marvel did. Me neither, but I see why they did it because they've announced mm-hmm. way long ago that they were doing the Godzilla versus King Kong remake. Yes, and since they are in the same universe, it would be a little awkward, especially nowadays, to just throw that out there and not have any like setup or build up to it. Mm-hmm. So. That's mostly why this movie is around. And also, uh, Hollywood loses their... Uh, uh, tr- they, they lose the rights to the character in 2021, so they're trying to get out what they can. Yeah. Which, I mean, why not? I'll take another Godzilla film. Yeah. I mean, it, it was enjoyable. Uh, I also liked that this one int- gave the possibility for even more monsters... They tease in the movie 15 brand new monsters. By the way, spoilers, obviously, this movie's brand new. Yeah. But... So, we'll, we'll try and avoid as much as we can, but... Yeah. They do advertise 15 new monsters, but they did it in such a way that only, like, I think two, maybe three of them you actually see and don't know about. The rest are all just names that you see on a screen somewhere. Or, or you a- saw... You, you actually see one of them in... Uh, the 2014 Godzilla, the first yes. Muto, which I have serious questions about that film in relation to this one, because this one kind of contradicts it, where this is the first massive unknown terrestrial organism. But in this one, they've known about them for decades. Yeah. the And they've gone from Muto to Titans. Yeah. So from what... I can find Muto is that specific Titan, and there's three variations on it. There's the winged one, the female, and then the male. Yeah. And from what I can see, that's the only one that does that. So, you know, it's special. Well, the winged one is the uh, male one. It's got its own category online, so I don't know. Hmm. I I don't know. I'm just talking from having seen both films. No, yeah, that's what I thought, too. But online, people who do much more research than I do were giving it its own little category, so I don't know if it's like the final evolution or Mm -hmm. the new Pokemon. I don't know. But so I did like that. We're giving the possibility for the franchise to get more monsters later down the road, especially since the monsters they picked for this one, while solid are definitely well seen classic monsters that we've, we've had some of them have their own franchise. The main opponents are, I like that they tease that, Hey, we have these other original ones as well on top of that. Exactly. And you get to, you only get to see parts of, or little bits of only a couple of them, and the rest are just names on a paper or on a screen somewhere in the movie. Yes, that, in my opinion, is the best way to tease at a universe, Mm -hmm. rather than, I mean, even though they've come out and blatantly said that, hey, we're building Mm -hmm. this world, 
it, it did it. It did it subtly, but not subtly at the same time. Yes. Also, very pleased with the Mothra representation. I mm-hmm. wouldn't say it's the best ever, but for having four giant monsters on film or on screen all at once, this was probably my favorite Mothra right now, excluding Space Mothra. Granted, we we've only seen. The Rebirth of Mothra, which I'm excited because I'm getting the re-release of Mothra on DVD next month. I will watch that with you. Yes, I am super excited for this. I will say the new design of Mothra felt like it belonged in the world much better than old Mothra did. Old Mothra very much looked like um, a Beanie Baby. (laughs) Yes. And this one definitely felt more like... Realistic. And also just like it could actually kick some ass, especially since they took away the laser beams. Yeah, and breaking off into a million little moths. Yeah, the vampire moth thing <laughs> was a little, maybe overpowered for this movie. So they, you know. Yeah. But they did hint at it at the be- at certain points in the movie with, you know, like the cocoon hatching and all that. They definitely... I but, love that they made him so gross. Yeah, they made they him... They made him buggy. Ooh, he is definitely a moth. Um, but you could definitely tell throughout the movie, they sprinkled in a lot of stuff from past movies and um, even the originals that really, like, especially if you watched the watched those, you definitely got the reward of catching those little bits. Yeah. Which was really nice. And I like that. One thing I am curious about the future for this franchise, I, re- I really do like um, this. I was reading a Time magazine um, when I, while I was stuck at the airport in Denver last weekend, <laughs> um, and... K.G. Ota, uh, who is Toho's chief Godzilla officer, has announced that these movies are part of the future franchise that's to become part of the uh, world of Godzilla. Ooh. Which, I mean, he, he's a multinational being yeah. now. I mean, it's... Oh, yeah. They, they can't, like... As much as I really like Shin Godzilla, that's still probably mm. my favorite Godzilla in recent years. Yeah. It's, I like that they're working together. Like, there's multiple types of Godzilla. Yes. And I also really liked that with what little human people story we got in this movie and just the cast that they picked in general, it did felt very uh, across the world, not an American monster movie. Even though, you know, the main characters and a lot of the sets were set there, Mm -hmm. we did have just enough people from other countries putting in advice they did scatter them across the world they they did that also in godzilla final wars which if you haven't seen that it's really weird okay. um <laughs> there's one random part where they they play one of some 41 songs in the background <laughs> and it's just like they could only get the rights for that clip of it nice um and no i, I like that they're doing that but at the same time i question part of it not of the people but the age range yeah the parents. The parents. We're not spoiling anything. This is in the very first, like, five minutes of the movie. Um, and why? Uh, why? Why bring your... Ch- who brings our child to this? Not once, worst, but twice. Worst bring your kid to work day ever. And, you know, I, I understand trying to get a younger audience in, trying to get them to connect with a child who's coming mm. of to be coming to stardom from Stranger Things, but... And, like... Her acting wasn't bad, as we see sometimes with children actors being put into scary movies or monster movies. Mm -hmm. She did a good job. Her character was believable. In fact, her character was more believable than her mother's character, which was my main complaint. But, you know... I I don't know. I I guess it's fine. (laughs) Like, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it. It's better than Son of Godzilla, where it was blatantly pandering to children yes agreed uh and from like an overarching story writing standpoint i see why they originally picked the two parents paths and choices and then introduced the daughters because they were from the first film this is them Hmm. dealing was it was that the same was it supposed to be the same people it was supposed to be the same family because they lost their son in the first movie I don't think that's right. That was the backstory they were given in this movie. I didn't take take that at all because <laughs> the one is a military man in the very original. Yeah, no, I'm they, not they, saying they actually managed to 
Bridget. That's the story they're given in this movie, though. I think they're from. I think they're from. They were there at the same events. It's not the same people. Yeah. Though. No. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. I'm Sorry. Okay. I, I thought you were saying that they were the no couple from the very first movie, and I'm like, uh, they don't seem like those people. No, they they aren't them. No. Um. They're they're just supposed to be dealing with the aftermath of yeah. The they keep calling it an attack, which felt like choice wording, I guess, but. And oh well, I guess I don't know what else you're supposed to call it. Yeah. Um, I, and so, like, I I can see why they picked the two paths for the parents in this movie. It creates conflict. It creates there. conflict. It also kind of shows like just the human reaction to for two different people. You know, the workaholic versus the shutdown. Uh, but then the rest of the progression of the characters they don't grow. They don't grow. Uh, they don't even die very quickly. <laughs> No, which, uh... Which is, you know, kind of the preferred, if you're not gonna grow, you know, keel over in a movie scenario. Yeah. But, I mean, they kind of try to get them to grow at the end, but you never really... I don't know. I feel like if they'd been in the film even a little bit longer, you'd be like, nope, you're still being the same you. Never mind. Yeah. No, there's... The only one who shows a little bit of growth is their daughter. She definitely attempts to show being the more mature person in the family, which I guess is good, but also, like, doesn't bode well for your parents if you're 12 and handling Godzilla a little bit better. Yeah. Especially in the movie world. I'm sure in the real world, lots of people would be very different. But in this movie world where everyone's prepared for the apocalypse, apparently, I don't know. Yeah, well, and on top of that, like, I I was in that magazine I was reading, they were talking about how through the years... Godzilla has always brought up like other issues besides nuclear power and war. Yes. This one heavily deals with terrorism. It definitely does. And it also kind of hints at humans being the root of the problem on Earth, which which is a constant theme. But I like that they brought it back to that. Yeah. And that the monsters are actually taking over. But I felt the terrorist organization was rather weak as well. Like it felt a little forced. It, yeah, like, I, you know, I understand trying to introduce many elements to the film. It, go, it goes back to trying to create this universe. You've yes. added so much to one movie that it becomes a jumbled... The narrative becomes a jumbled mess, is what it is. Yeah, and I feel like this bad guy was a setup for the next... next maybe, maybe not King Kong, but the next version of Godzilla's, the Godzilla movie. But because they were shoved in... This time to get that after credit scene at the end of the movie, it they felt, I don't know, it didn't feel like they had a real cause. No. Which, I mean, if you're going to be this crazy terrorist organization in the middle of a titan battle, I feel like you need a really good cause. Yeah. Or at least put it on a t-shirt. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm still staying optimistic. You know, I understand, like... Back to the Marvel Universe, Captain America 3, which really wasn't Captain America 3, it was <laughs> Avengers 2.5. I, I get that you need a setup movie if you're trying to build the universes. Yes. But at the same time, if you do it well enough, you don't, is the thing. Like, yeah, and honestly, I would have been okay with the bad guys not even have made an appearance until that after credit scene. Mm-hmm. When then their purpose would have been a little bit more clear, and their logic yeah. would have made a little more sense to me. Which, but, wh- when okay. she's when she's giving her speech about why they're doing it, when did she have time to make that slideshow? Was it I prepared or like? Does you she know, have an assistant? I don't know. It was. I don't know. Visually, monster battle wise, great. Looked looked fantastic. Also. Gotta appreciate all of the little blips that they put in. There was a lot of bits Mm. referring back to, especially the original example being Godzilla's Roar. They made a reference back to how it was originally made. Not a fan of how they portrayed it in this movie. Yeah. But I see what they were trying to do. Yeah. Which, when you see Godzilla appear again, I forgot how big of a beefy boy he is. Oh, he looks like he could, you know, linebacker all the way. Oh, God. He he has no neck. <laughs> no, he has shoulders and a head. <laughs> like Hobbs. Just like Hob- your cat. <laughs> Hobbs has no neck. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. I mean, I don't hate his new design. His overall silhouette still 
gives me a very Godzilla vibe. You can tell he's Godzilla. You can he, definitely tell he's Godzilla. It, it's not like the uh, 98 one where you... you it, it's it's a it's an iguana. It's not it's any. Iguana. You know, it's an iguana. I also will say that in this variation, especially since we got so many like bits of him in the ocean, you could definitely feel the alligator vibes from him, yeah. which was cool. I really liked that. They definitely gave him more of an animal, not just like saying, "Oh, he's doing these animal instinct things," but giving him an actual animal movement. And yes territories to patrol which, that felt good that which felt is nice. what what they did in the uh back, back to the 98 godzilla mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. they took it too far of it being just an animal yeah yeah this one was a almost right at that balance of he is an animal but also maybe super intelligent God nah. kind of thing, but also no, maybe he is just, like, it was a nice gray area. They, yeah, they, of, they hinted at there's a bigger past to everything with yes. the Egyptian-esque uh, temple that he falls under, which, did you see the Godzillas with spears? Yeah. <laughs> 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 They're just hanging, it's just, I don't know, uh, they're doing its own thing and I love them. I'm, it, I am very sad that the city we will not be coming back to, because it's they destroyed it in the movie, which is very disappointing to me. Yeah. Because especially as someone who loves the whole Atlantis Lost City thing. Oh, there was so many conspiracy crap in this oh, movie. Oh, I loved it. I, I was here too. for it. Oh, yeah. That, uh... The Hollow the Earth. Hollow Earth. Which you were talking about in the last episode. I or... called it! <laughs> <laughs> so... Oh, I loved it so much. The second those words came out of his mouth in the movie, like, half the audience was like, yes! <laughs> which... Loved it. Which, for this, we had to sit up in the front because you didn't want to get there too early because no one goes to movies here. No one does, except for <laughs> this Friday, apparently. Was there nothing? Like, it wasn't even the weather was bad. Like, people could have been at the lake, which is the norm for down here. Like, I went to, the, like, the Fantastic Beasts on night of premiere, and there was, like, ten people in the movie theater. So why is the last week of Godzilla <laughs> showing? Why is the movie theater sold out? I don't know. I don't either. But also, I do I do really like and appreciate that so many people didn't rely on the critic reviews for this one. Yes. Fans saw it, fans loved it, and that's all that mattered for them. Yeah, which I, I haven't really talked to my family too much about it because they saw it this week as well. My dad loved it, which is not a shocker there. I mean... Yeah. M I feel like my dad's the one who really introduced me to Godzilla, especially with his record collection and... Yes. Which the Blue Oyster Cult remake was oh, pretty solid. Oh, I loved it. That was really um, good. I'm going to be listening to that all week. My mom and my brother hated it. <laughs> they, <laughs> Your brother th would. Yeah. They were... Um, th they're one of their big issues is like, oh, he's being revived again, which, you know, I, I get it. It's... Yeah. He, they said he died four times and he died twice. Yeah. But diet is a very loose term. God Godzilla is the radioactive Jesus. Godzilla is radioactive Jesus. And, I mean, because he's a titan, we get a lot of loose bits to play with as far as, mm -hmm. like, what he's capable of, what he can withstand, all that sort of stuff. So, like, yeah, he died, but it's it didn't feel wrong in yeah. the movie for him to be, you know resurrected which i still wish that they had used the term kaiju I, instead of titan you know i i get bringing titan into it they're colossal beings but i also think titan maybe just translates better throughout because did you see how many translation people worked on it no there was I've... a chunky bit at the credits of just people working on the language part for this movie which i appreciate and yeah. was probably very needed so i kind of wonder if maybe titan just didn't translate nicely yeah, or, I mean, ka kaiju just means strange creature, so... Yeah. Which, I mean, it, it's a unique, distinct word, though, too. It is. So... And, I don't know, we could have even, like, maybe played with it just, like, briefly, like they did with a lot of the other things. Like, they did throw in uh, Gojira, or however you pronounce well, that uh, properly. That, co that actually comes from uh, that actor. I can't remember his name. He was in uh, The Last Samurai, I think. I think so. But in the 2014 film, he refused to say Godzilla. Yes. Which, kudos to him. Yep. I highly, I really appreciate that because he's 
it was a nice detail part yeah. that he made. Because that, that is how he would pronounce it, because yes. he's from Japan. Yes, and he did a really good job of not feeling uh, fake or acty with uh, his stance and his character. It it played off really well. He did a really good job with it. Yeah, I the one character from that organization that I wasn't a fan of in the least was the comic relief dude. Yeah. He was heavily... Again, I understand comedy when they're trying to do it it just tends to fall flat with me especially like it's a very sitcom comedy yeah i think the comedy fell flat with a lot of people mostly because the comedy style didn't quite match up with what we were expecting to see mm-hmm. uh, but i wouldn't say from someone whose standards are real 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 low <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't say it was a complete flop of comedy I think a lot of people did get it, and I think a lot of people did enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I just don't think it was that overarching umbrella of comedy that they were hoping to hit. Yeah, and, you know, I... Again, like, wild, like in Wild Wild West, we, uh, we, we talk that, about that there's yes. too much comedy in that. And it's that same level of, like, it doesn't... Comedy works in the right settings. This one, it felt very shoehorned in. It did. It felt kind of like maybe it was written at a separate time for the rest from the rest of the scene, which it's done better than a lot of movies I've seen. Yes. But the comedy is a little hit or miss. But if you go in knowing that it's not a comedy film and you're here just for the giant monsters, it's easy to overlook and mm-hmm. still enjoy yourself. Maybe if you're going to watch it several times in a row, I could see how that'd be maybe a little distracting, though. Yeah. And I mean, of the recent two... I'd I'd still probably go back and rewatch the 2014 one again. Yeah. I'm I'm a little hesitant to watch this unless whatever the next Godzilla movie comes out ties I, directly into it. I believe the next one is Godzilla vs. King Kong. It is. That's the only one I've seen announced. Um, again, I, I don't know yeah. if they'll be able to pump another one out by 2021 for Godzilla alone. It's not on the radar, but that doesn't mean they're not going to try. Yeah, which I'm, I'm actually really curious about the future of this franchise, um, just because, one, it is such a large franchise, what they're going to up the ante to, because now we're in that whole uh, anime superhero oh, we're, upping we're, the ante we've stuff. We've hit some Dragon Ball Z level stuff. Yeah, because now we've killed off, kind of killed off King Ghidra, uh, Ghidra or Ghidorah, however you pronounce it. Yeah. And... I think they're probably going to bring him back as a mecha. Yeah. But at the same time, I want them to... It needs to be more than just that. Yeah. And the other question I have, and I, the part, the only part that with my real low standards that I was disappointed with is we do know that King Kong versus Godzilla is the next one. Mm-hmm. King Kong is like a midget compared to Godzilla right now. He's, I think he's like a third of his height or something. So like... Are we gonna arm King Kong? Is is it even gonna be like it? It didn't set it up in the way I was kind of hoping. Yeah. Where like maybe this Godzilla scaled back a little bit, or which there were a couple nods to that that's coming up where they were talking about oh the, there's what they said like twenty seven that we know of or something. Yeah. And in the screen you saw his shoulders and his head, and it's like. Okay, like, again, doing the little hints here and there that, hey, something bigger's coming. Yes. And if, just so you, when you do go watch the movie, the credits are worth sitting all the way through. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of uh, news bits and uh, newspaper clips thrown With on the screen. With retracting. Yeah, they, they, they also um, let you know of little tiny bits that maybe aren't necessary for you to continue the franchise knowing. But it does kind of fill in little holes for you that you might have had questions with. Mm-hmm. Um, example being, they they tell you where a couple of the monsters end up and where they're kind of like hanging out and taking a nap. Located. We saw the ones in what? Uh, Fiji. F- Fiji. Ones in Munich. I don't. I don't remember. They do. It they was, also, one was in Germany. Yeah. There's. They explain where quite a few of them are. There is a little blurb on King Kong and what's going on with him, why he wasn't really shown in this movie, mm-hmm. which is fine. And I thought that was a clever way to do it. Cause if you, it was a reward for sitting through the credits. Yeah. Um, also like the credits themselves while our standard credits, there are a couple of names and bits in there, 
uh, crediting like Godzilla himself, which, which was a nice touch. I am glad he was there as himself. Yes. I didn't want anyone else <laughs> acting as Godzilla. Yes, <laughs> and there is an after credit scene, which is worth sitting for. I think. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's like I wouldn't say it's like Marvel Universe level worth sitting for. No, I mean it's. It's set up. It's not like at the end of uh, the last in- or last Avengers movie I saw. Not the most recent one, but when it actually ends, when it set up Captain Marvel. Ah, uh, yes. Like that was a pretty big one. Yeah. Or the end of Ant Man two, where he goes yes. shrinks down, and then he- he's talking on the radio and no one's answering him. Yeah, it it wasn't that level, but it was a nice touch and it was a nice little hint for you to sit there and think about. For the, for the next franchise. Which, um, I mean, I already brought it up where I think my personal thought is they're going to bring him back as Mecha Ghidorah. Which would be kind of cool. But it's one head. is I, I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, the other thing that I thought was like stellarly done was the, mu- was the music. Which the music for Godzilla has always been fantastic. Mm-hmm. But this is... Uh, this was up there with the original yes. composer's As- level. That's, that was another thing to stick through the credits for, because partway through you hear the ramping up theme from the original Godzilla, yes. and I was so happy with it. Yeah, the music fit really well. At no point was the music either super distracting or missing. No. It, it played nicely throughout the whole film. It really got you immersed, and then they we were also teased with that remake of the song Godzilla, which mm-hmm. was catchy as all get out a really nice uh piece that i will be playing on repeat in my headphones at work (laughs) all week so that was a really nice little little bit to to have in there yeah i over i mean overall it's it's a good it's not a bad movie it's not great it's not gonna revamp the uh kaiju genre or no the franchise as a whole. It definitely wasn't a new groundbreaking take on the giant monster thing, but I think it was a nice addition. Yes. And if you are already a fan of Godzilla, you will love the movie. There's uh, enough in there to keep you entertained and enough bits to reward you for having watched so many bad ones. It, it'll... For me, I think it'll uh, get get you ready for what's next to come. Definitely. I don't necessarily... I don't think you have to watch it for the next one. No. Especially but since... But it, it, it's a fun little teaser setup. It definitely was, and I definitely felt like it was a more fun movie to watch than the first one. Mm-hmm. I loved the first one. I felt like this one I had more fun watching it. It felt more like the giant, ridiculous battles that I grew up with and that I yep. really liked. And so, you know, if you have a mid-tier level of um, movie enjoyment standards like yeah. i do or even lower like i do <laughs> you will have a great time with this movie it's not son of godzilla but no. it's also not like godzilla versus Bionate, which is one of my favorite ones yes um so it would you recommend going to see this movie in theaters is the thing i i, I think that we should in theaters and i know we're coming up to the end of it but if you still have a chance to i do think that in theaters it is worth the watch because of two reasons. Because the big screen plus big monsters equals mm-hmm. a really cool feel and effect. And also the... And and I'm, a, I'm sensitive to sound, but this movie with the surround sound and the speakers turned up as high as our movie theater turns them up did give a really nice... Uh, like, you felt very immersed by going to the movie theater. And I normally hate going to the movie theater. Yeah. I I would say go see this as a matinee. Yes. Don't this would be a nice matinee movie. Don't pay evening prices for this movie. Um is I, I'd say that's a nice way to put it. Yeah. And I mean here I can't go to matinee is because movie theaters don't open till noon. <sighs> yeah, movies just aren't popular down here, I think. Oh well. Uh, says the one who Hey, this is the first time in three <laughs> years of living down here that that has been that crowded ever. Yeah. But. So. Anywho, this has been the good, the bad, and the weird shorts. Thanks for listening. Peace.